Sewing Center in Pine Bush, New York, and I want to welcome you to another Sewing with Sandy. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use the quick and easy miter binding tool to take something like a pre-printed panel square and turn it into a pot holder. This can be done with lots of different things. You can make pot holders, placemats, table runners. What it's doing is it's taking the back of your fabric, pulling it around to the front to make a false binding. Gets things done super quick and easy. While it isn't as strong as a traditional binding on a quilt, it is perfect for quick things like pot holders, again, table runners, placemats, so simple things. So the one I have to show you today is this right here. The center part was the panel all the way up through the red border and the green binding was the backing that I've turned to the front and used the ruler to get perfectly mitered corners. So I hope you stick with me and see how easy it is to do because it's an awful lot of fun. To make this project, you'll need a panel. Now this panel, the squares are approximately 11 inches. With anything that's pre-printed, they weren't perfectly square, but we have approximately an 11 inch panel, which worked really, really nicely. Because I'm making pot holders, I use insole fleece, which if you can see, has a silver reflective lining in it, which will reflect the heat away from you. Now this um, is a metal inside, so it cannot be used in a microwave, but it does work well for keeping the heat away from your hands or your table. In addition to this, you want to use a piece of cotton batting or possibly even two. I found one works fine, but this just, the extra batting just gives it a little extra protection um, on your dining room table or wherever you plan to use it. You will also need the quick and easy miter binding tool. And when you get your package, there are instructions on how to do it. And there's also a ruler, a tool in the back. When you get it, it has a brown protective coating on it. You are going to peel that off and reveal this yellow colored, greenish yellow ruler that works perfectly for what we're going to be doing. So this is the tool you're going to need. You also need a fabric marking pen or pencil or chalk liner. I have the friction pen, works nicely, draws a nice clean straight line, which is what we're going to want for this. Wonder clips are great. So we'll need some wonder clips, we'll need some straight pins, and lastly, a point turner. And this is in addition to our normal sewing supplies. On my placements, I did a three quarter inch faux binding. You want to cut your panel half to three quarters of an inch away from the last border that you want to see. I don't want to see this pinkish color border. I want to see the red as my last border in my pot holder. So I'm going to cut between half and three quarters inches away from that red border. I found for my own use, five eighths worked best. I know some people have trouble with eighths. They just don't like measuring them. So somewhere between half and three quarters of an inch will work best. Then you want to go ahead and write down those measurements. This happened to be 11 by 11 and a quarter. I want to cut my insole fleece in my batting approximately one inch bigger. So just for ease, I'm going to cut it 12 by 12. This will get trimmed exactly even with your panel in the end. So don't worry if it's not perfectly an inch bigger. It doesn't matter. We just want to have a little bigger. So when we're basting this all together, if anything shifts on us, we don't end up with no batting somewhere. So we're going to cut it an, an inch bigger. And then whatever measurement this is, you want to cut your backing approximately four inches bigger. So again, this was 11 by 11 and a quarter. I cut my backing 15 inches square. Once everything's all basted and put together, we're going to trim that backing to the perfect size, but an approximate four inches bigger is perfect. So I'm going to cut, this was 11, 11 and a quarter. I'm going to cut my batting and my insole fleece 12 and my backing 15. I have my backing, my insole fleece, my batting, and my top all cut to size. I'm going to go ahead and center everything as best I can. You can see I have just a little bit of extra of the batting and insole fleece all the way around. You can center it as best you want. It doesn't have to be perfect because it will be trimmed. So I've got that centered and I have this centered. I want to make sure I have an inch and a half at least from the edge of my panel fabric to the edge of my backing. I have two on this side. Let's go ahead and measure this side. I have two here as well. We're gonna do the same thing top and bottom here. I only have an inch and a half, which means on top, I have a little too much. So we're gonna scoot that up a smidge. And now we're going to go ahead and baste. This basting will need to come out in the end. So just a long stitch somewhere in that very outer edge section. 
So as long as your machine will allow, stitch right here. If you have a machine with a built-in walking foot, you're going to want to engage that walking foot. If not, you will want to add your walking foot because you don't want your layers to slide as you're basting this down. You can see now that the, all the layers are basted together. I did a very long stitch, so it will be a little easier to pull out in the end. Now that this is done, you're gonna wanna go ahead and trim your batting even with your panel square, even with the top. I like to trim this with using my rotary cutter versus scissors. Whatever you find easier is great for you. I fold it back right along that basting line I just sewed keeps the backing away from where I need to trim. I'm going to place my ruler even with the edge of my panel top. And then I'm going to trim. I've done one side already. I'm gonna twist it and do the same thing on the next side. Fold your extra backing back, place your ruler along the edge of your panel top. Make sure when you're trimming, you will not be trimming any of your backing. You might be able to see right here, there's a little bit of green showing. If I were to cut right now, I would ruin my back and this would be done. That just means I didn't fold it nicely along that basting line. If you think this is a little scary for you, which you might, Go ahead and just trim with a pair of scissors the batting and the insole fleece even. And there you have it. The batting is all trimmed evenly with the panel. Now that that's done, we're gonna give it a quick press just to smooth everything out. Then we're going to trim the backing to the perfect size. Now that your batting is trimmed and you've pressed, you're going to want to trim one and a half inches from the edge of your top. This number can be changed however you'd like, but the directions start with an inch and a half, so that's what we're going to do. I've lined up my inch and a half line right along the edge of my panel top, and I'm going to trim. Go ahead and trim one and a half inches all the way around. You'll notice that from the edge of my ruler, I've measured over one and a half inches. And if you look at the bottom here, this black line is even all the way across. So I know that everything is going to be square. So now go ahead and trim the other three remaining sides. along in your directions, step three says to take your edge of your backing and fold it in until it meets the top. So let's do that now. All we're doing is folding this edge until it meets the top and pressing. Give it a good press because this press is very important and it is permanent. Once this is pressed, this press is permanent. That will become the edge right along here. So make sure it's a nice straight crease and it looks very pretty because in the end, this will come up and go right there 
will be your nice edge. So press one side and then go all the way around pressing all four sides. four sides are pressed, we're ready to use your quick and easy mitered binding tool and your marking pen. Once you've removed the protective paper from your ruler, it will look like this and you will see some lines. There is a squared off edge here which will line up to the edge of our fabric. We're going to line that up with the edge of our fabric top and then we're going to draw this line. I did tell you that this is a permanent fold and that is true, but we are temporarily going to open it up so we can make a few marks and get our perfect miter. You're going to take the lines of the ruler, line them up to the edge of your panel top or your project top, and draw a diagonal line along the edge of your fabric. If you're following along in your instructions, this is step four. We drew a diagonal line and then right along where the fold is, you just want to make a small mark. And you can see my purple mark right in the crease here. And I'm going to do that right in the crease on this side. Repeat that on all four sides. noticed I marked the lines pretty solid. I went over it a few times. That was more for you than for me. You just need one line so you can see it when you're working at home. Now that all four corners are marked, we are going to follow step number five and fold this so it can be sewn to give us our perfect miter. Now we're ready to miter our corners. You're going to put it with the backing facing up and fold it corner to corner. These edges should line up as well as the fabric should come to a nice point here. That's your first thing you want to do. Get all those edges lined up. I like to place one pin in here. Once I get the edges lined up, I feel that helps me with keeping everything nice. Now you're going to take a pin and go straight down through where this short line intersects with this long line. and it should come right out on the back at the same spot. If not, just make a slight adjustment. And sometimes it goes beautifully the first try. Other times you feel like you have to move things around and shift a little bit. I'm still not quite there, but I'm getting closer. Once you've gone straight through and you're satisfied, looks good on both sides, you're going to then just place your pin in there. Before I do any other pinning, I wanna make sure when I sew, I'm sewing directly on this line. I'm going to just place a pin along the sewing line, flip it over and make sure that it's going to be sewing on the line on the back and it looks good. Go ahead and then put a few other pins just to hold everything in place while we go over to the sewing machine. For this part, I like to use an open toe foot so I can see what I'm doing and I can see that I'm sewing on the line and I stop exactly where I need to stop. So let me change my foot. If you had on a walking foot from before, you may want to change the foot to something you can see a little better. And again, I'm going to shorten my stitch length to my standard stitch length. If you start right at the edge, there's a chance the fabric's going to suck down inside the machine. So what I do is I come in a little bit off the edge, I get my needle lined up where I need to be, and I put my machine in reverse. I sew a few stitches backwards, all the way to the edge, and then I come forwards.
And I do this a few times at the beginning, back and forth, because there is a lot of stress. I am very close to where those fabrics intersect, those lines intersect right here. I can do one more stitch and then I wanna go backwards a few. Come forwards a few and then back again. Just really reinforce at the very beginning and the very end and then when you're done, you can go ahead and cut and remove your pins. Your final step is to cut all the way along. Now, if you notice, we did not stitch the entire piece. We just stitched from the fold to where those lines intersected, which is along the other fold. Once that's done, you're gonna trim approximately a quarter of an inch away from that seam line. And do the same thing on all four corners. that all four corners are sewn, the backing kind of looks like this. If you haven't been trimming as you are going, you're going to want to trim approximately a quarter inch from the sewing line right here on all four sides. And believe it or not, we are almost done. I bet you don't believe me yet. But what we're going to do is flip these corners, miter the, get everything nice and mitered. We'll clip it with wonder clips and we're gonna do a quick straight stitch and it will be all done. I work on one corner as I go. I'm going to take this corner here. I'm going to flip it. It doesn't poke out super nice. So you'll want to take a point turning tool poke out that corner. You don't want to use the tip of your scissors. You don't want to poke through it. And that crease we made earlier is going to fold in, fold all the way back into where we had it before and it lays nicely. And you're going to put a wonder clip there to hold it. These clips are great because they can be easily moved. You don't have to worry about pins, about stabbing yourself. If it needs an adjustment, you just push on it and slip it where you move it where you'd like. Let's move around to the next side here. We are going to, again, just tuck this side in and put a wonder clip. And just keep going. Don't worry about filling in here. Go to the next corner. We'll get the corners nice and then we'll fill in everything in between. So you can see when I just kind of flip it, it looks okay, but nowhere near as nice as it could look. Make sure you get your point turner in there and gently poke that corner out. 
But look how beautiful your miter is. It works perfectly with the quick and easy miter binding tool. Get it nice, push everything in and add a wonder clip. Swing around to this side, do the exact same thing. Another wonder clip. And then move on to the other two corners. Once that's done, then we'll fill in everywhere in between and get it all looking perfect. Corners look great, but now we need to fill in everywhere else. Do you understand now why on the corners you had to go reinforce it at the beginning and the end? There's a lot of pressure as you're poking out that corner. And at this edge, you don't want this pulling apart as you're folding these edges around. So again, just make sure everything's tucked in real nice here. And put a clip on. I probably use about five clips total on each side. And one side is complete. We're gonna rotate around, do all sides so they look nice. Once I get everything looking nice, I may need to slightly adjust the ones on the end. That's not a problem. But I do like to start in the middle and work towards the ends. Looking good. Next step is just sewing the edges. You can do a decorative stitch right here along the edge. I chose to do a straight stitch and I will show you. And the reason I did a straight stitch along the edge is because I was afraid if that green thread came over onto the red, it would take away from the nice little red border. So I just used a straight stitch over here and I'll show you what I did with my machine to get it set up so it looks real nice and it's nice stitch around the edge. Before we move to the sewing machine, I just want to suggest that you start down here when you stitch. That's the least place someone's going to look. We read from left to right, so the top left is a big one to look at, and you're still paying attention when you get over here. You read, you read, you read. By the time you're here, you, you're kind of glazing over. You don't see this, and when you get to the end, that's your final resting point. So the top two corners are very visible. The bottom right is visible. The bottom left is typically where I start doing things that might have a join or a seam or something. So we're gonna start stitching in this bottom corner, come up around the top, back and finish here. So I'm gonna get my machine set up and we'll do that next. For this final step, I have the camera right in front of me. So I'm gonna be doing my best to work around it. But what I wanna do is I want to stitch off to the side a little bit. I have a little trouble with this open toe foot because then I tend to wobble around and I don't go exactly where I need. With my faf, I have the narrow edge foot. I know on other machines it might be edge joining. It is very similar to a stitch in the ditch foot. You'll notice there's a blade going down the center, which is going to ride right along the edge of my fabric, but there's a big wide opening. I'm going to get this blade going right along the edge of my fabric. And then I'm going to move my needle position over to the side a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see the needle moving a little bit, but as I lower, it's going off to the side instead of going in the ditch. So now I am following my blade right in the ditch where the fabric and the, the two fabrics meet, but my needle stitching off to the side on the green. Again, I start in the bottom left corner you do not need to backstitch here because when we come around, we'll then do an, we'll overlap. 
when you get to the corner, make sure if you're using the blade, it doesn't mess, uh, interfere there. You want to stitch, if you can, till your needle goes into this mitered seam. It's a little hard to see with this foot on. If you need to raise your foot to do it, fine. I think I look great. I am going to get rid of this clip, rotate. And when I lower, I didn't quite go far enough. So I'm gonna raise, I thought I did, but I guess I need to go one more stitch. That looks perfect. Now I'm going to stitch all the way down this side. Pull out the wonder clip before you get to it. You can see this is pulling a little bit here. Just keep everything nice and smooth as you're sewing. Again, I sewed right to that seam line there. I'm going to pivot and I'm going to start sewing again. You can see with my left hand, I'm kind of pulling this fabric in. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I'm not careful, I might see a little bit of that pink. That just means when I trimmed my edges I didn't trim it to the right width or maybe I pressed a little off so I'm just kind of holding that nice and taut with my left hand We're just about back to where we started. So I'm going to sew to where I started. You can see the thread here. And then I'm going to go backwards, but I don't like to go backwards at a full stitch length because then it's a little more obvious. I dropped mine down to about 1.0 millimeters from my normal 2.5. It's making some little stitches and then I'll come forward. It's locking it in. Again, this is the place where most it's least visible, but I still don't want it any more visible than it has to be. So here it is, all done, looks great. That's all there is to it. It's not that hard, it's kind of fun. I was able to make, I made three of these prior to today in just a few hours from figuring it all out to sewing it to getting everything worked out. It really is a great way to do this. If you like the panel, you can add sides, make it a placemat, do anything you want, but it is super fun. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.